situation, but it really puts things in perspective. And one of the things that, it, that for me, was very powerful is that I think that anybody who has, had, has um, raised children, and particularly raised teenagers, every single teenager and every single child is full of frustrations and difficulties and hassles and unfulfilled expectations and conflicts. And those things, you know, when you get the phone call saying your son has been in an accident and he's in ICU at the hospital, it just all goes out the window. Suddenly the only thing that matters is that your son should be alive. And there's an intrinsic, an intrinsic um, infinite value to the human soul that you recognize, you know, just intuitively. You don't have to have a sheer about it. You don't need to learn about it. You just know that this person has infinite value the way he is now. It doesn't matter what he's ever going to accomplish or what he did accomplish. It doesn't matter if he's perfect, not perfect. Whatever it is, this person is beautiful. And that was, uh, for Esther and myself, that was all we desperately wanted was to have our son Yaakov back. And Baruch Hashem came back to us. So... Um, that perspective, I just hope that Hashem should bless us to continue uh, having that perspective and to appreciate all our children and everything that Hashem gives us in life. Another thing that I think is really important to know is the Pasuk in Tehillim. Correct me because I'm a little bit um, distracted here, but Lev Nishbar Venitke Hashem Lo It says in uh, Tehillim that a broken heart. And uh, a broken and, and a downtrodden heart, Hashem will not despise. When you go through something like this, your heart breaks. And, um, and it breaks you in, in such a powerful and horrifying and completely self-shattering way that um, you, don't, you, you hardly recognize yourself aside from recognizing anything else that's going on in your life. And that brings about an incredible closeness with Hashem that you didn't imagine was possible before. And so the Pasuk saying that Hashem loves and brings close those broken, uh, who have a broken heart becomes so powerful, so real. And I realized the, real, uh, the, the reason for it is because there's a subtle, there's a subtle yadi you know that, that it's my power and my my strength and my smarts and my health and my whatever it is that have brought me to who I am and it's not just in our big accomplishments in life that that expresses itself but even in the fact that I breathe and that I'm alive we we hold on to this kohivaotsum yadi and when you see your son lying there in the bed in the hospital and you realize this is we are just nothing and life can transform itself so instantly overnight and there's nothing to us then your openness and your clarity and your your um, yearning for Hashem just becomes so much more real and so much more pure than when we ourselves are blocking which we do on a regular basis, and I certainly do on a regular basis. And um, so the broken heart, the, the, I, I remember that um, Sherry, Sherry, that wrote the book. Hmm? Mandel, Mandel. Sherry Mandel, right, who lost a son in a terror incident and wrote a book, The Lessons of a Broken Heart. And she gave me the book, and, and I heard her speak many times, and I actually started the book many, many times, and I could not bring myself to read it. It was too painful and too horrifying to even read this book, even though that she expresses the same concept, the blessings of a broken heart. And, uh, but, you know, hopefully I'll have time to read it now, but now I can really appreciate what, what she means. And, um, and I hope that, that that certainly stays with us. And the third lesson, and the last lesson that I want to share is, is really based on the idea of the Olam Chesed Yibaneh, which normally, and probably the true shot on the pasuk is that Hashem created the world with chesed and uh, chesed makes the world go round but it really, to us in going through this experience um, it was really chesed built our world 
if it wasn't for chesed, we would have just been completely shattered. You know, your world just falls apart, everything collapses, you can't think, you can't talk, you can't, you can't, you, you just don't, you lose all sense of everything. And it was only because of the chesed that people did. Chesed almost seems like a, like a minimizing what people did for us. The prayers that went out, the help that went out, the caring, the feeling like, like people all over the world were in it with us, with Yaakov, that were feeling our pain, that were feeling a, uh, such a huge desire to have him return to health, that it kept us alive. It was, it was building our world. Olam Chesed Yibaneh really took on a completely different meaning, that it was what, what really kept our world alive. And so I'm, I want to share, first and foremost, of course, our, our thanks to the Almighty that you know, orchestrated this whole production <laughs> from beginning to end for all of his, uh, his reasons that, uh, that will become clear as time goes on, um, and the miracles and the, you know, the wonders that, that we've witnessed <coughs> since uh, that day on May 23rd. And, um, but I also really want to take the opportunity to thank the people who were particularly key. And I know this is dangerous and this is really stupid to do and don't try it at home. But, I, we, you know, we can't, we can't do uh, an evening like this and not really share the, the outstanding personalities. The, the winners of the of the Chesed Awards that that just and I want to mention I want to mention them partly as Hakara Satov and partly because for us it was such such lessons in Chesed and saying their names and saying what they did for us is, really doesn't do anything justice it just you should all know that you kept us alive you kept our families alive and I'm sure to a large extent you kept Yaakov alive so thank you to all of you but a couple you know a few people that really we just have to mention number one my brother Raphael and Rebecca you know family in a situation like this is uh, irreplaceable and they were here there at the hospital with us from the very first minute and Rebecca and Rafael, you know there was nothing that they wouldn't do and they were filling in all the gaps when everybody was taking different roles they were there checking out and, and filling all the gaps and making sure we had everything in our family and everything that we needed um, their daughter Tema where's Tema Tema was amazing. She sort of took on a new full-time job of creating a website, creating lists so that people would be saying to Hillam all over the world non-stop, you know, 10 times, 12 times, 15 times over. And then when Yaka was released into, into Shikum and, and we needed people there with him all the time, she was making um, schedules, which was a very challenging thing to find people 24 hours a day, scheduling them in for weeks and weeks at a time. A huge job, so thank you, Tema. Fanny Schwartz sort of took, took over the family. Whatever, and I don't, you know, I think that Esther and I, we don't even know half of what happened, you know, because we were just sitting at the hospital, like, doing what we had to do with Yaakov, and somehow or other our family was kept running, and people kept eating, and somehow laundry was being done, and it just, it was happening, but Fanny was there really as a second mother to our family, and taking care of all the basic needs, and uh, Elise, Elise J Aguilar, um, she was, she was, arranging non-stop meals. I think it started with two meals a day, and then, you know, for months on end, we were getting food taken care of every single day, every single Shabbos, massive amounts of food pouring into our place. But from people that we really didn't even recognize the names on the cards of who was sending it to us, but uh, it was phenomenal. The Clars, who organized uh, Shabbos food from, from all our friends and neighbors in, uh, in Beitar, and kept us uh, stock full of really good cake also. Hezki Feld, who would come to the hospital on a regular basis to put on tefillin with Yaakov when he started, and even before he started regaining consciousness. Baruch Goldberg also to spend time with Yaakov. Ruth Spiro also, she used to sort of, I don't know how she maintained her business. Ruth, uh, she was just at the hospital all the time. Uh, without being asked, she was there and she was such a huge support. Um, Brookie and Eric Cooper Smith, um, a second brother, and 
and and mentor and support and wisdom and everything that we needed and and Brookie also had a lot of experience and wisdom that she shared with us. My niece Sydney in Los Angeles, she devoted all of her uh, all of her um, presents from her bat mitzvah, which was a couple of months ago, towards um, buying needed equipment for the ICU unit at Hadassah Hospital where Yako's life was saved. And she raised forty thousand dollars to buy two heating, uh, two cooling blankets. They're called. These are blankets because when Yaakov was there and they needed to maintain his temperature over two weeks, they would just put on gauze and pour ice on him all day in a freezing cold air conditioned room. But they have much more sophisticated technology. They just didn't have it. So now they'll have it thanks to Sydney. Um, just so many people that would give us ideas, Dave Green, Jamie, Callan, Yutz Green, they, people would come in with creative suggestions that would really make a big difference. Menasha Weiss took over carpooling our kids to school every day. Elazar Grunberg, uh, Elazar, is he here? Elazar showed up at the hospital while Yaakov was in his second um, surgery on his brain uh, the first night. We were outside the operating room you know, shattered. And Elazar, who was in St. Louis somehow in town, found out about it, shows up at that very painful hour. I mean, I just don't know how he had the guts to show up at that particular moment, but he did, and he gave us so much chizuk based on his own personal experience and continued on giving us chizuk and sharing with us a lot of knowledge and information that we needed. Of course, the doctors, Dr. Levine and Dr. Rosenthal, who were singularly important in doing surgery and uh, keeping Yaakov alive in the critical times. Rav Wolken, Rav Chaim Wolken from Ateras, who came to the hospital in, in one of the first days when it looked pretty hopeless, and he turned to Esther and myself and he said, I promise you we will dance together at Yaakov's Chasana. And, Coming from a man like him, it gave us a lot of chizuk. Benjamin Wall, who didn't know Yaakov at all, and just would drop by the hospital when no one was even there and drop off ten cakes for Yaakov to enjoy. Wouldn't even expect Yaakov to talk to him. You know, no, just like knowing exactly what Yaakov wanted to just do pure chesed for its own sake. And then disappear until the next day or two when he'd come back again with a, a few bagels with lox and cream cheese for Yaakov to enjoy and gain back his strength. You know, and of course schlepping up to Harat Sofim or Ein Kerem every single time. And of course all our kids, Raziela, and, who did a huge amount keeping the family going, and Yael, who despite you know, having her own family being in Beitar helped so much, and Svi, who flew back from Mexico, which was such a... a a big fizu for all of us that he would be with us. And um, Daniel and all the younger kids, you guys were amazing. And, you know, they also had to bear with not having much of parents for quite a good while. My parents, of course, uh, my brother David and Judy, who also helped financially, you know, whatever we needed, you know, nurses all night and uh, food and whatever was required. Uh, hi, Rav Wolken. And, um, and of course, my, my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, Safta Vreni, who came down from the north all the time and s moved into the house and helped us in whatever way we, pro we, we possibly needed. She was amazing. And her friend Helen, who was an experienced nurse, who also was ready to be at the hospital every single possible moment. And I sort of have, have saved the, like, the last, you know, zinger for, for last, the Rebitson Weinberg was so, I don't think she's here yet, but she was so off the charts on chesed that it was, it was almost impossible to believe. It was like this woman who has 12 children and over 100 grandchildren and great-grandchildren and runs a full-time school, had nothing else to do on her plate all day but to think about what do the shores need. She would come to the hospital every single day, sometimes twice a day, she would all bring food. The first Shabbos as we spent there, we had to be at the hospital at, uh, at Ain Karam. Even though there was food taking the, at the hospital to, for everybody, she would show up on a private... Yeah. <laughs> and she would show up with uh, with her with her taxi cab loaded with 
food for about 30 people for, for my wife and myself, to be ca including tablecloths and salt and five different types of cake and three different types of fish. And then she started bringing the, just the appropriate type of uh, brain games for Yaakov at the right time. She was, she was just like a sort of a, a Talmud Chachom at Chesed, you know, thinking, oh, what do they really need? Like she stayed awake at night to try and think, what could I do tomorrow to help these people? And it was a fun, phenomenal. And I think like the, oh, and, and I have to mention also my, my sister-in-law, Sari, who was there also for everything that we possibly needed. Phenomenal, and, and like a lot of love and, and chesed she gave to Yaakov and to my wife. And the chesed was so much beyond, it was so much more than chesed. It wasn't just things that we needed and provided things that we needed. It really kept us alive. It kept us aware and, and uh, that, that we weren't in this alone. There were people behind us, that there was hope, that there's goodness in the world. And it, it, uh, it just, uh, you know, it, like we were in a time that we were completely broken, it kept us, it kept us alive, it kept us going. So thank you all very much, and and uh, you know, of course, everybody's prayers and everyone's emails and everyone's kindness and everyone was worth, and just knowing people cared and were worried made a huge, huge difference. So thank you, all of you for doing that, and to Hillen groups going on all over the place, Mrs. White and the Betar with her group and. And I really, my, my sincere apologies for all the people that I've forgotten, because I know there are many of you who did a lot that, that really was that were phenomenal. So um, I'll conclude with that. Um, but we have the very special privilege of having Rav Wolken, who's been very close to Yaakov for a long time and very helpful and very close to the family. So I'll ask Rav Wolken to please uh, come up and say a word. I stand here with a lot of emotion, knowing that around 30 years ago, I taught here in Eishatera, and Eishatera was still a baby in the trying years. For Hashem, I have traversed these walls and these Talmudim. Ephraim was mamish a star Talmud of ours, and I come back to where my roots are, Eishatera. It's very, very, I would say, heartwarming to be attending this Sudas Hoidaya here in the old city. As we said today in Halem, Lecho Ezbach Zebach Toida, I have brought for you, I will bring for you a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Bechatzrois Beis Hashem, Besechech Yerushalayim, Hallelujah. The place to give thanks, the place to say thank you is in the, the quarters of Hashem, in the midst of Yerushalayim. How can someone be closer to Chatzrot Beis Hashem where we stand here in front of the Hotel Maravi? This is the place, this is the place for Todah, this is the place for thanksgiving. Now, another word about Eishat Torah. Eishat Torah has become an international empire. Not to be believed how it started from a small base medrash down the road until today, there is not a corner in the world that is not familiar with Eishat Torah. What is the secret of such spiritual success? I say one word. L'shem Shemaim. My father told me that when the altar of Kelim came to meet the mayor Simcha in Bialystok, he had a letter of recommendation from Rabbi Israel Salante. What did it say? No lengthy discourse, not many pages, just four words. Hamoisik Tabde, the bearer of this document, call Ma'asav Lishem Shemayim. These four words are the greatest words you can describe and tell about somebody. Lishem Shemayim, this is what Rabbi Israel Salante had to say about the altar of, of Kelim. Reb Noyach, the unforgettable Reb Noyach, just four words, not money, not fame, nothing, 
Nothing was in his mind but to change your mind, to bring back all those Jews that were so far away at the time. And Baruch Hashem, Pu'ulah Tzadik Levrocha, the handiwork of a Tzadik, such a success. Here we are in Eisha Teva, a course from the case of Maharabi. Who would believe that Eisha Teva would grow into such an edifice of Teva, such a monument for a mume, for bringing back those boys and girls from all over the world. Yaakov, my dear Yaakov, I saw you in your most difficult times in the hospital. He was there with you and not starting from today. Years and years were connected and were bonded with Taylor, with love and with understanding. Yaakov, you are very, very special. And what more, your parents, Ephraim and his wife, unbelievable people. And you see how the Rebbeinu Shem watches over the righteous, watches over those people that are so close to him. We go to such a miraculous and speedy recovery. I have no words to go. I just want to use this opportunity to give a bracha to your wonderful and dear entire parents that they are so important to us and they are such an ex- ex- example of Ramuna and trust in Hashem and Yaakov, as I told your mother in the intensive care you know, dies to you, will dance at his wedding. He doesn't look in such good shape now, but the trust Hashem, I promise you, will dance at the wedding. And I see Yaakov is already getting into shape. <laughs> Yankele, you're a wonderful, sweet, lovable boy, and the parents should have much, much, much nachat, and I thank you, Rebbe Freim, the wonderful Rebbe Freim, for giving me this opportunity to revisit Aisha Taylor in a time of Simcha, in a time of Thanksgiving. I give my thanks that I was able to be part of this unbelievable network and enterprise. Even though I was there at its young years, Baruch Hashem is grown into one of the most choshiva institutions and places of Kirov in the world. Hashem, yeh imachem, may the Almighty bless you in everything you've done. And in Mir Hashem, Yaakov, we're waiting for the invitation to start getting into shape of Nancy. The Zerat Hashem, the Shidduch will come, and we should only have good tidings and things together. A good night. Um, thank you very much, Rav Wolken. Rav Wolken's done a tremendous amount for all of us. And I, I want to ask now Yaakov to uh, share a few words. I didn't uh, work too much on this before. So the first thing I want to say is uh, always use a helmet. It's dangerous for the cars. I'm, so, I'm, really, I'm still trying to figure this out. I mean... Last time I woke up, I mean, I was just like wondering, like, why am I in the hospital right now? Like, what do I have here? So I was like, I was told, you know, you're three weeks, you're out of it. And with the time, you're coming back slowly, slowly. So, Baruch Hashem, thank you very much. Um, I want to thank um, the doctors, the, especially the the brain doctor is, is very good. Um, <laughs> Um, okay. Well, I'm, uh, there's a lot of people I don't know, so I'm just I'm just saying thank you to everybody. Thank you for all for coming. Uh, thank you for coming in the hospital or helping out in any way. Um, thank you very much for Hanatema and uh, for the, what she did online. It was very important. Um, uh, okay. Thank you to uh, my, some of my, my my friends from the army. They were there. Uh, some of the the best times they were they were there they were um there was this one time when I was um, I was I was still without unconscious and they said uh what's gonna happen like uh, we don't know but like they were saying he needs someone to be close to be there at all times in case something happens and we don't see it so basically they they asked like if someone could do that so some of my friends from the army. They, they came in a bunch of bunch of times and these people are like they're still in the army these days and they kept on coming in so I want to thank them um, I want to thank my brothers and sisters I want to thank my family uh, especially my mother thank you very much uh, I bought you a little present to say thank you please come up
ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם, הגומל לך אביב טובות, שגמלני כל טוב. Just um, my daughter Raziella wants to share a few words following which we're going to bench and um, just we have a, a special treat in store and that is that we've all been invited to a little private Shweki concert which is going to be happening right here and uh, in about a half hour. So the schedule is as follows. We're going to be benching right away. Then we have to clear off the roof so they can rearrange things for the concert. For those who want to stick around, we're going to go downstairs, David Mariv, and then we're going to come back up um, for the concert. So enjoy. So uh, that's the other I wanted to share a few words. Hello. Hi. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody, for coming. So basically, the Monsieur Sushayim says that he asks, what brings to what? Love brings to giving, or giving brings to love. So most people um, think that when you love somebody, you give to him. But it, Monsieur Shashayim explains that it's the opposite. When you give to somebody, then you love him. And tonight, like there's people here that I never met, and I just, we feel the love, we feel the Havas Yisrael here, because people have gave us so much. If it's if it's davening, if it's um, uh, sending food, supporting, everything. It was it's so much giving was happening here, and the love is like in the air. And thank you, everybody. And we really, we couldn't have done it without all of you guys. And with also with people that aren't here that help. Thank you. Okay, I, I also want to, uh, but we, we could not have survived without Raziella. She was, she really took over as mother to the family in a lot of times when we weren't there. Thank you, Raziella. Um, and of course, you know, really the key player in all of this, aside from Yaakov and aside from Hashem, of course, being the most key player, my wife really, uh, th this was a tough period. <laughs> and it really put everything... Uh, all right, Rabbi Schwartz and Rabbi Ziering, who created the, uh, who helped the, the, the don't complain, don't, uh, don't complain and don't blame campaign. But my wife really kept the family together. She was there every single second with Yaakov in the hospital, davening literally 24 hours a day. No, I mean literally davening 24 hours a day to heal him. And her devotion as a mother... I, I know mothers are known for their devotion, but this was uh, an unbelievable thing to see, and it uh, it 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 tried the 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 extremes of human experience, I think. And and my wife Esther did a phenomenal job, and I really appreciate her as a mother and as a wife. And so, because Yaakov's little gift wasn't complete, I got you a little something as well. But you don't have to come up. Um, Okay, because we have to clear off the roof, we, we made copies of Nishmas Kochai, which we would love everyone to say together to express our thanks to Hashem. We're going to do it downstairs after Mariv, and uh, we'll bench momentarily right now. As a matter of fact, are the benchers coming? Do we have a coin in the house? What?